All right, do you want to come with me, Bung Bung? Come in, or are you staying? It's been hot since we got up, like six, seven. It's just one of those days. I'm gonna walk around and have a count up how many we need. And today, tomorrow, I'll go out and buy some. We're in this back section here. It's not too many, really. I think we could do with one here. This one doesn't look that great and got a bit of space there next to it, so keep walking around. Because I'm trying to do the video at the same time, I'm sure I'm going to lose count. Six down the back there. That's seven, eight, nine. Sometimes people are asking me in the comments if I could talk about like cost of living over here and, and also quite often like how much did your land cost or how much does it cost to buy you know, land around there or whatever. So I've, I've spoken about this before, but obviously there's new viewers and I feel like I can mention it again. So just feel like this area, I'm not up on the prices of any other area, just around here, sort of where we are, like central Surat Thani. So I'm aware of a few sales that have gone on around here and I see land advertised fairly often on Facebook. So I can give you like a general guideline and even like within an area, it's like your, your location still counts and lots, lots of other factors. The cheapest land I've seen advertised around here was on Facebook and it was advertised as land with no papers. Like, so there's no paperwork. So, and it was, it was a rubber tree plantation, which was advertised 200,000 baht a rye. The fact that it's got no papers is reflected in the price. You can sort paperwork out, but you need like a, a solicitor and it can take time. When Penn's uncle bought his land, up in Tai Rom Yen, it had like no paperwork as well. I think it was like bad paperwork. And he's a solicitor himself, he's a lawyer himself, and it took him three years to sort out the paperwork. So it can be done, but it, it can be difficult. So moving up from there, I'd say general land, that's not in particularly good condition. Maybe land that has palm trees on it. You might be able to get hold of that for about 300,000 a rye. Not the best location for that money though. Moving up from there, you get to like your rubber trees ones that are big enough to be cut so they've got a little bit of income coming in those would normally be looking for five six hundred thousand a rye and then going up from there you've got the, the durian land well, i've seen kind of not very good durian land advertised from about seven hundred thousand up to about a million and even some really nice places advertise at two million a rye which is that's the highest price i've seen and that was on facebook as well so like in, in here where my neighbor is He's got lots of big trees, he's got fruit on the trees. So it's got fruit growing up there. So I reckon if he were to sell, he'd be probably looking for 800,000 to a million, something like that, like per rye. And one thing to think about, see like I'm going out and buying new trees. It's not a big cost, but it all adds up. You know, you, 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 when you're building the farm up, you do sort of like pour money into it a little bit. But if you imagine much like any property development, you know, you buy a house, make improvements, you can normally, sell it and get your money back or sometimes people even do that and make a profit don't they well farmland is, is much the same thing if you buy some like horrible land and do it up really nicely you know you're taking the value of that land from like your, your starting price to like what you can sell it for later and once it's productive once there's trees and fruit and income the money kind of jumps up a little bit but yeah it's complicated these rubber trees in here are sort of quite nice ones quite nice size most likely reasonably productive but you know later on they get bigger and older those ones over there are sort of they're getting towards like the end of their life so you know for stuff like that you might be looking to pay a little bit less and i'll give you another like wild card example like pen's uncle's farm up in tai Rom Yen, which i mentioned before like when he bought it it didn't have any paperwork and it took him years to sort it out See, some places you can get a Chinook and sometimes you can't get one. It's just not available in, in a particular area. Up in the National Park, you can't have a Chinook. So that land's also Torbor Ha, like Torbor 5. But he paid a million a rye for that farm. So that's an example there of sometimes bad paperwork can be irrelevant if it's like just a, a good farm that makes money. So, you know, I guess you kind of got to weigh everything up in a, a balance and... Bang, bang. Yeah, I think I'm going to get 14 trees, I've decided. He barked at this guy like every day. <laughs> Some people have also asked me, like, how much did it cost to do up the farm? I can't answer that exactly. And you know, every farm's going to be different, of course. It depends on the condition it's in and where you want to take it to and what your existing water sources might be and electric, all that stuff. So it's complicated, but roughly, 
if I say it in US dollars, I think it's roughly $50,000, something like that. So that cost was for removing the rubber trees and sort of tidying everything up, clearing out all the old crap that was in here. You know, then a tractor to plow it sort of smooth, a digger to come in and build up all the bumps, a digger to dig all the channel for the water system, then paying for the water system, digging a pond, two wells. The trees themselves are not that expensive, really. It's, it's like everything else. And it's, there's lots of little things and it all adds up. And, and yeah, we, and we still got more to do. You know, we need to, to dig more stuff, ponds down the back and things. So there's still like a few more thousand to spend before we're getting to where we want to be probably. Bung bung, it's been in the canal. It's all dirty. Well, you're going to need a wash now, aren't you? You're filthy, filthy bung bung. Get out of here. But you know what it's like, it's the same with everything in life. It, it normally costs more than you think and there's always something you didn't think of. And, you know, so, so just for example, run electric down to here, dig a new pond and a well and hook it all up. Parts and labor for that. I would, I would estimate that's gonna cost us three, three four thousand dollars, so. Everyone's in here, finally everyone's waking up. Penn's gonna make us some egg fried rice. I'm hungry. So I hope that video was interesting for some people. So it's complicated. Hopefully that should give you some idea of the cost. This is a 10 rye farm. You know, there are some economies of scale to be had. So if you have a smaller one, yeah, it'll be cheaper, but you're kind of getting less for your money. And if you have a bit of a bigger farm, it'll be more expensive, but you're kind of getting more for your money. If you think about it in terms of whether your farm is two rye, five rye, 10, 20, you still got to buy like one pickup truck to, to manage it all. So the only other, Bit of advice I might have about this subject in, in general is if you're thinking about buying a bit of land, a house, a car, really whatever, just I think it's a good idea to try to buy things that are desirable because they're easy to sell if you change your mind later on. It's like nice to leave yourself a back door. If things don't work out how you think they will, you know, you don't want to be stuck with something. So that's one reason I'm happy about the bit of land we got in here. I know the guy next door wants to buy it. You know, we're bordered by lots of neighbours around here and I think some of them don't have a lot of money, but some of them do have a lot of money and, um, you know, they're always keen to buy a bit of land, especially if it's like close to a bit they already own. So, so I'm just saying, you know, you can like hunt out that bargain where you've got like, a big piece of land for a really great price. But if it's in the middle of nowhere and it's not that desirable, then you know, one day you, you, you could end up a bit more stuck with it. So, so it's just a little extra thing to bear in mind. I don't normally ask people to like subscribe and all that on my videos. I, I can't really be bothered. And I, I think about it like, because like everyone says that, don't they? Everyone says, oh, press like and subscribe. And I think like if everyone's saying that, then it's it's kind of like no one's saying it. So I sort of don't bother. But I thought I might try try doing that a bit more in the future. So, you know, if you like my videos, please subscribe and press the like button. And if you like, leave comments. Like even if it's like you're an idiot, you don't know what you're talking about, then then YouTube kind of likes that. And it, it makes YouTube think that, your content is engaging and it's more, more likely to promote your videos to other people. So, so it would help me out if you like, leave comments about whatever you like and put your shopping list down there or something. And anyway, that's it. I'm, I'll see you later. Penn's got the eggs on the go. All right, so I'm gonna stop this video here, but I think I'm gonna keep filming for the rest of the day because I think we might be up to something or other. So, so if you wanna keep watching, then like go to the next video and uh, see you later.